can COVID vaccines help long haulers with symptoms? Uh, and, you know, I saw, and I don't think we ended up talking about it on a live stream. I saw an article, not a peer reviewed article, like New York Times maybe, um, that made this claim. And I can't make sense of how this could possibly be the case. Well, I mean, I think, unfortunately, this is the other side of you're interfering with a complex system. Mm -hmm. So you've got a complex system. It's now had a novel input, the coronavirus, and now you're going to add another novel input. Mm -hmm. Could that novel input disrupt whatever is going on? So if the COVID virus, let's say that the story that we understand about COVID is correct and that the body clears COVID, but some people keep having symptoms, which yeah. could be the result of damaged tissue, it could be the result of uh, a miscalibration, don't know. But um, something about that system, let's say that long COVID is autoimmune in nature. Yep. And then you dump a vaccine on it that causes production of the spike protein, which then occupies the antibodies and T cells that are targeted at COVID, detaining them from screwing up the body through autoimmunity. Is there any, is any, is there any reason to think, though, that the spike protein that would be produced by these vaccines, RNA or DNA, would be would jump to the head of the line? Um, in terms of occupying the immune system? No. As but, opposed to just like, so it's like a density dependence argument. Right. If, if your body is producing uh, antibodies and T cells that are attacking yeah. t tissues that are not infected, mm -hmm. then dumping something that occupies some of those T cells that waste their time, yeah. right, could be positive. So I'm not saying that I think this is true. And part of the problem is, you know, it's, I'm starting to see discussion and I think, um, it is important that we have it about what fraction of long COVID is long COVID and what fraction of long COVID is something else. I don't want to call it uh, hypochondria, but people are too... So what, if, if, you, if it might not exactly be long COVID and it might not exactly be hypochondria, what other, what, what kinds of things are you imagining? Well, or have you heard... Let's put it this way. of discussion of. Everybody is um, involved in some novel way of living now, mm -hmm. right? I know that I periodically wake up and I feel, oh, goodness, that feels like I might be getting sick. Yep. And I start wondering about COVID. And mm -hmm. then I figure out that it's not COVID and I get mm -hmm. over it. How many times does that happen before I ever heard of COVID? And uh, So like misattribution even perhaps. Like, okay complexity, a suite of symptoms. I know I had the thing. This suite of symptoms broadly matches this description and we have a name for this. And if I name it this, then I get, then I have credibility. You know, it, it doesn't have to be any kind of, um, in, there doesn't have to be intentionality. There doesn't have to be deviousness oh, right. uh, in any no, absolutely, way. Absolutely. The yeah. point is it's a complex system. And it's, you know, it's a relief to have a name for a thing when you, when you didn't. And if you've got an easy name to default to, perhaps that's what you do. Um, let's put it this way. You've got some large number of people who have long COVID. Yeah. Okay. Let's say long COVID is absolutely real and some fraction of them just simply have it. Yeah. Okay. And some fraction of them have got some new pathology that just co is coincident in time with them having had COVID yeah. or was COVID pushed something that was in the offing into an active form and it's just a casual connection that really has very little to do with COVID. Mm -hmm. Or we've also heard very credible stories of um, latent pathologies that reemerge due mm -hmm. to COVID, such as uh, mononucleosis. Yeah. So anyway, there are a lot of things tied up in here. Yeah. And I guess so, um, Holly, Holly Mathnerd says long COVID is incentivized on social media, major attention, political point scoring for team blue. Yeah. Right. And so yeah. you would imagine that some, some fraction of long COVID is clearly not long COVID, right? Mm -hmm. What fraction is it? And how do you sort between yep. that which is truly new and mysterious and yes. that which isn't? Yeah. And the answer is nobody knows. We're doing a terrible job with COVID itself yeah. with respect to what it actually does, what it responds to. Yep. Um, so yeah. No, and I, and I do think, I mean, this is this is sort of where we were and what I see up here, both from Holly and other people, is um, that we've now got a culture um, that um, that 
that raises people in the estimation of, of unfortunately, many social groups um, if they say they are weak, if they say they are sick or yeah. victims or, you know, still dealing with something that they just need help with, you know, and this, you know, this is unfortunately, this is this, <laughs> to the degree that this is identifiable um, on average by political party, it's more a democratic position. Yeah. Um, and to the degree that it's identifiable um, by sex on average, it's more of a female position. And like, I don't like that either of those things are true, but they are. Um, and, you know, and, and we have a move to basically celebrate that sort of thinking as opposed to self-sufficiency and pull yourself up by your bootstraps and try to figure it out and try to, you know, try to make yourself better and be anti-fragile. And, um, you know, all of, all of those things that I just said, um, will help not just, you know, yes, all of us, if more people did that, but also every single individual who does. No question. Um, it also, uh, and this goes to your point about this being more on the blue side than the the red side. Yeah. Um, but in some sense, the Marxist instincts that exist over on the left um, build in a reward for neediness. Yeah. And so right. in some sense, this is being manifest in a medical context. And what we have is some kind of uh, Munchausen thing. And it is very important not to say, oh, there's a lot of fakery around this. Some of it's unintentional. Therefore, it's not a thing. And the problem, the right. real victims are the ones who do have something and it's getting lost in a cloud and, of I noise. I mean, frankly, that's exactly what we see with trans. Yeah. Right. And so we'll get we'll get there. Um, I, I really do want to get to those questions, although sort of mid-20s in my list here, um, that you know, it, just because all the noisy people and the vast majority of, you know, in, in the case of long haul COVID, I don't know, but it may be that the vast majority of people who are getting all the attention are, you know, are not experiencing a thing related to COVID and there's still a real, real thing. And at this point in, you know, you said it's not culture wars, it's about existential threat, but, you know, I'll say culture wars for the moment. I feel very much that way with regard to trans. We know it's a real thing. Yeah. We, you know, there, there are real trans people. Yeah, as we said many, many times, but but the thing getting all the airtime is um, largely not that. Yeah, in that case, yeah. there is at least a natural distinction. It's not a hard boundary, but there's a right. distinction between trans and trans activism. Yep. And that the problem is when the two things are synonyms, there's long mm -hmm. COVID and long COVID, you know, what do you do? Mm -hmm. um, right. I yep. do think there was a period before long COVID was famous, and I was watching the long COVID subreddit. And so these were of people you were. <laughs> who were having trouble getting the attention of the medical community and mm -hmm. very few in the outside world had even heard of it yet. Yeah. And so my sense is well, most of that was quite real. And I feel, I know I feel this way actually about a lot of the autoimmune diseases, um, like for instance, fibromyalgia, yeah. right? Like if I, if I didn't happen to know someone who did their, literally their PhD dissertation on fibromyalgia, there is a very good chance that I would still feel like, oh, what, whatever, you yeah. know, this is some, you know, it's, it, it's, it's an attention getting, you know, thing that is really hard to pinpoint that has a whole set of symptoms that you don't have to have almost any of them to be diagnosed. And it's mostly women as a lot of these autoimmune diseases are. And so, you know, is that physiological or is that personality? But, um, but no, as it turns out, there's a ton of reality to, you know, modernity creating autoimmune disorders. And sure. that happens to be one of them. And it may be that yeah. women are more susceptible because they have a much more complex puzzle with respect to immunity and pregnancy interacting. So it may Maybe the Very systems much so. are tuned in a way that predisposes towards autoimmunity. I would say, though, in some sense, the fault or a large part of it is with the medical community, which does not properly distinguish between – we have the distinction between mm -hmm. a pathology and a syndrome, right? And mm -hmm. the problem is, guess what? It's a complex system. What's a syndrome? It's something with a bunch of overlapping symptoms. But you get that. Anytime you have a cascade of 20 things yeah. that happen in a row, anything that intervenes at one of these stages causes all of the pathologies downstream of it. So is fibromyalgia a thing mm -hmm. or is it four things, right? right that well, and this is true for so separated. Sorry, this is true for so many things that are, for instance, the DSM, like schizophrenia, you right. know, multiple things, autism, probably multiple things. And, you know, some of those things aren't real things, yeah. right? Like, you know, the, the thing we've named includes all of this. And there are, you know, maybe five distinct ideologies, including 
yeah, that's not a thing. Like what you've got isn't 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 even part of this this thing that we're trying to describe. Right. And in mm -hmm. fact, we need, you know, because every single time you have a pathology, some fraction of the people who say they have it are there for psychological reasons rather than physiological reasons. Yeah. Basically, that does not discredit the physical phenomenon at all. Yeah. It's just, it comes with the territory. Right. And so we ought to have that category. And, you know, I don't like hypochondria as that category because that suggests a kind of global phenomenon. But basically, there is a human analog to what we call placebo. And someday we're going to have to talk about placebo because sure. it's a very interesting uh, and not what people think kind of topic. But, mm -hmm. um, but the point is, just as a phony drug can fool you into uh, reporting that you're better, um, a person can falsely understand themselves to be ill, yeah. right? And that that's just simply inherent in the territory. And anytime you're dealing with syndrome stuff, it's going to get all tangled. Right. Hey, guys, that was a clip from our monthly private Q&A that you can get access to at my Heather Hyang's Patreon. And you can also get access there to all of the past paid subscriber content. So please consider joining us there. Did you mention that these private Q&As are the key to living a better life and living to tell the tale? I forgot to do that. These private Q&As are in fact the key to living a better life and what? Living to tell the tale. Living to tell the tale. Go ahead, live to tell the tale. Join us there. See ya.